Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 270 in the first podcast of 2020. Award season is now upon us, which means Talking Oscars is back to all cover all things Oscars and more. Joining me now is film critic, movie analyst, and Talking Oscars co-host Shane A. Bassett. Shane, how was your Christmas and New Year's? Hi, Matt. Yeah, I, my Christmas and New Year was pretty low-key. A couple of movies, but mostly eating, drinking, and surfing, enjoying the weather. I agree. Pretty low-key on my end, too. However, I think I, I spoiled my kids a little too much this year. And, you know, <laughs> I, you, I don't know many people who know, but actually it's been a while since I had full-time employment and I got hired like five months ago. So I had a little bit of money to spend and... Uh, I'm ashamed to say I bought my my older son every Star Wars action figure I could find, and I found and I found a bunch of Ninja Turtle stuff for my other son. They're both very happy with these presents, but I think next year they're going to be very upset with Santa because this is going to be like the last of that kind of spoilerific uh, Christmas. But other than that, uh, it's been really good kind of time off. Um, not for everyone though. We uh, as a lot of people, um, of course, Australians and a lot of people from overseas know, of course, um, Australia especially New, uh, New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria are in the grip of some of really kind of crazy bushfire season. Now, bushfire season for us is an like annual thing. It comes uh, quite, you know, we hits us once a year. Um, this year, though, has been really, really huge, um, really devastating as well. Um, so, Shane, on behalf of your, myself and you as well, I just want to shout out to everyone out there um, that's um, affected by this, um, uh, all of our listeners um, that look where we are with our thoughts and prayers are with you and I know that's an over overused phrase but I, we, we mean it in the most sincere way as well um, my brother lives down the south coast I, I've been down there so many times to places like Aladulla and Milton and, and Mollymook so I can totally um, uh, empathize with what a lot of people are going with down there uh, and I really do hope that this you know bushfire season um, just clears up sooner rather than later. Hopefully we get some rain. I know there's been reports of rain hopefully coming next week and hope that really does help. I know this weekend is going to be a really hellish because temperatures are going way up again. So once again, just want to say to everyone out there on behalf of Shane and myself, we are uh, we are thinking of you. You're in our hearts and in our minds. And for anyone interested, you can go to Red Cross, Salvation Army, um, and the um, Royal um, the RFS as well. You can donate to them and help out with the cause because um, uh, these people need all the help um, that they can. Yeah, no, that's well said, Matt. And uh, it's, it's more devastating than, you know, people may imagine. Luckily, it hasn't affected me or my family, uh, but I just really do feel for, you know, the people that is losing homes and and farms and animals and things it's just terrible but uh, it can only get better it can't get any worse hopefully uh, i hope so as well um so we're going to leave that now let's go on to what we're here for i mean that is to talk about movies specifically the films releasing this oscar season um shane the last time you and i saw each other there was at a premiere for a pretty big release in no way do i think it's going to get a mass amount of oscar nominations maybe perhaps in the sound and visual effects categories um but we saw star wars rise of Sky skywalker we we're at the sydney premiere um this is a movie that as per usual has made already a ton of money uh, worldwide um but it was also a film that afterwards had was like had critical opinion really split like down the min- a middle i think um, actually according to uh, Rotten Tomatoes, which is the review kind of aggregate, um, that it's the lowest um, uh, rated um, Star Wars movie with critics uh, since um, The Phantom Menace, um, which is saying something because a lot of people didn't like that film. Um, Shane, what was your reaction to watching Rise of Skywalker? Uh, I, it's still the same as it was back then, a couple of weeks ago. It, it's I'm up in the air about it. There, I had a problem with a lot of the story arcs and, and things that were happening in it. I just do think that there was too much happening at times and there was a lot of fan service. I know that word is being uh, used quite uh, regularly of late, and but I can't explain it any other way. There was too many references to previous films and, and characters and things for my liking. I just wanted it to be a little bit more singular uh, and I liked it to a point, and I might need to see it. Well, I will definitely see it a second time. I've yet to see it a second time. But, I mean, overall, I was just really disappointed. Uh, and I liked The Last Jedi. A lot of people were against that. But I liked the a unique and originality that had compared to how this was seriously 
I'm not going to give spoilers away. There might be people out there who have not seen it yet, but there are some things in it that don't add up. I um, I rather liked Rise of Skywalker, and I liked The Last Jedi as well. I think I wanted a few to really kind of both. I, I like you. I like okay. the originality that Ryan Johnson kind of brought uh, to The um, Last Jedi. I mean, I think The Last Jedi is the closest you could probably get to an art house a Star Wars movie as you could probably get. Very, probably very can. much so, yeah. Um, whereas you're totally right. Like, The Rise of Skywalker is a film. I think a lot of people would like who perhaps would like Rise of Skywalker are those who have a bit of nostalgia in regards to the original trilogy because, like you said, it has a lot of callbacks to that. There are characters that come back. Um, there are certain things that happen that kind of... I think they kind of retro kind of fit a lot of things that happened in Last Jedi that a lot of people didn't like. Um, to me, though, what I liked about The Rise of Skywalker is that it really focused on the core tenets of the mythology or what I really like about the whole Star Wars series, which is... The story of good and evil. I think it really kind of approaches it in a more kind of pure way. I really liked as well by Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley did with their performances. So they're both quite good in this movie. I like Adam Driver especially. I liked what they did with his character. Um, and there's one key moment. And like, I like. Can, can I cut you off there? Because Adam Driver to me, he almost seemed like he was not interested at times. I much preferred his concentration and his character in Last Jedi and Force Awakens. For me, though, it comes down to, I think, the performance that he gives in this movie is much more of an introspective one than compared to other the other two other movies. Um, okay. it, it's that kind of thing that's happening within him and the redemption story that his character goes through, but I'm not going to give away too much now because, like you, I know um, over, like, I'm sure millions of people have seen it, but maybe some people haven't. And, you know, our, our, <laughs> exactly. thing, our thing is always you got to think about the one guy, not the million numbers, right? So we're not going to give away too much. I would say, though, I like their performances. I like the kind of like this epic sci-fi action filmmaking that the film had. I could have done with 20 minutes less. It seemed a little bit long for me. And um, like you said, it, it seemed like they jam-packed a lot of stuff in it. There's never a moment in the film when they're not going somewhere or doing something, which is yeah. all fine and good. I mean, it's a blockbuster movie, and there needs to be some momentum in it and, and like in sequences and such to keep you kind of entertained. But maybe you could, they could have taken out you know, 20 minutes or so uh, from that movie. Um, I also think that overall, uh, as a kind of like a trilogy, um, st- you know, Disney really could have done with going back to some of the um, other storylines that weren't in the cinema field, like the books or the comics and such, and like maybe doing something with that. I know when they they bought the rights to everything in regards to Star Wars, they said they're going to get rid of all that other stuff. We don't need it. We're going to make original stories. At yeah. the end, at, and in the end, they didn't really make an original story. I mean, The Force Awakens was very much a brief on New Hope and... Rise of Skywalker very much kind of like had a lot of nostalgia to it. Then the original story was The Last Jedi and ho-hum, a lot of people didn't like it for some reason because of it. And and But that's a, a, a podcast for another day. Um, I, I just think that they overall, I like the films, but the perception out there is that they really dropped the ball um, in regards to what they could have done with the Star Wars trilogy. Um, look, but in the end, end of the day, they made billions upon billions of dollars on this thing. Um, so that must be a success in their eyes. Um, Shane, what do you think of like, their handling of the whole... Just to end, end our, our discussion about Star Wars and getting back on the, the, what, we, what we usually do in regards to award season, how do, what do you think about the whole handling of, of the series as a whole from what Disney have in, in the Disney Star Wars universe? Do you think it's been... Taking the, the financial blockbuster kind of element out, out of it, do you think it's been a, a success or do you think that they dropped the ball a bit? Well, obviously, I think it's a success. Just going crazy for it and it's still making a lot of money. And people are – Star Wars fanatics might be a little bit critical, but they're still seeing it two and three times. Yep. You know, there's, there, there's some real deep fans out there that love it. Uh, even though that personally, I don't think that you were mentioning the length. 20 minutes shorter i don't know about that i think it's the length isn't a problem it's the content Mm. for me it was just i I was very surprised and happy to see more of carrie fisher than i expected yeah they 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 utilized that you know it it kind of worked for me and i I enjoyed it how they how they did do do it but adam driver for me seemed like he was tuned out most of the time and maybe that's just me but it's yeah definitely wasn't the length it was the content and it was too jam-packed with 
unex- unexplained uh, incidences in it and answers to a few things. And maybe they'll be answered later in another book or whatever. I don't know. But the way Disney's handled it to me, just in a nutshell, I mean, they've, they've acquired it and they've done what they had to do. They've, they've brought the fans back because of the uh, the, the prequels really turned a lot of people off, but they brought everyone in. You got to admit they brought everyone back to yep. the Star Wars universe, including the the Mandalorian and the TV stuff. So, yep. I, 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 you know, I, because I'm not overly happy with it, doesn't mean other people aren't. I'll watch it again and make an, uh, you know, a further assessment. But overall, what else could JJ Abrams do? I mean, he just wanted to keep the fans happy, and he's done that, I think, to a point. Very good point. Uh, speaking of Adam Driver, we're going to move on now to a totally different Adam Driver performance. We're going to talk about Marriage Story, which has been nominated several times uh, at the upcoming 77th Annual Golden Globe Awards. Uh, this will air in Australia next Monday, uh, midday. Uh, it will be live from the Beverly Hilton in Beverly Hills, California. Um, and once again, Ricky Gervais will host. This will be his fifth hosting gig at the Golden Globes. Um, so Shane, you and I... The last time we spoke Golden Glows, we talked about our uh, surprise, what we thought were, who were snubbed, and our surprise nominations. Now we're going to delve back into these nominees, and we're going to make some uh, predictions as to who we think will win um, in the categories. And for everyone listening, if you don't know, we don't really go into screenplay or the more tech stuff. We focus on the main categories, um, director, the actors, and the films. Um, and the big reason for that is because there's so many kind of categories. If we talked about everything, we'll be here for days. Well, Shane and I love Oscars and everything. Award season, so we're going to be here for days talking about that stuff. <laughs> um, so let us talk now about the 70th Annual Golden Globes. Um, so how about, Shane, we'll go through the um, categories make our predictions, and then after that, let's talk about some random predictions, what we think could happen on the night. How does that sound to you? Yeah, I think that's great. And, I mean, the, the Golden Globes used to be the predecessors for Oscars. Yeah. That was quite much anymore, although last year Bohemian Rhapsody and Green Book both won their various categories, and they were both big winners at the Oscars. So yeah. who knows? There's, there's always a few surprises and shocks, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to going through these nominations with you and our picks. Okay, so first, let's talk about best performance by an actress in a supporting role. So the nominees are Annette Benning for The Report, Jennifer Lopez for Hustlers, Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell, Laura Dern for Marriage Story, and Margot Robbie for Bombshell. Shane, who do you think is going to win this category? <laughs> well, Laura Dern and Jennifer Lopez are on top of their game. They, they're so good in these movies, and I think Laura Dern is probably going to be the favourite. But I'm going for a upset in this particular one, Kathy Bates. Mm, interesting. And Richard Jewell. Yeah, she is getting such a massive rap for a movie that is getting high praise from critics but not a big box office. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and then we, of course we've got Australian uh, Margot Robbie up for a chance. Is she likely? Probably not. But, you know, upsets can happen, but I'm going to tip. Kathy Bates in in this category. I'm going to go with Laura Dern. I think she is the favourite not only for this award but also for Oscars as well. It's really it's a, the thing about Laura Dern is really interesting. She's been around for a long, long time. She's Hollywood royalty, um, and it seems like in the last several years, especially, she's been really prolific and really putting um, up some really great performances. Um, and Marriage Story, what she portrays in this film, this really kind of vicious divorce lawyer who's on the side of Scarlett Johansson, and she's got some really great kind of one-liners, some great monologue as well. Um, there's a scene where she's in the courtroom and she takes off her jacket and you just can't help but watching Laura Dern do this. I mean, it's just such great kind of scene-stealing stuff. Um, I just think that this is going to be the start of like a, a, an awards haul for her um, with this, um, with this uh, category. So I'm going to pick Laura Dern. But, you know, I don't know why... But I'm just Im- imagining Jennifer Lopez winning for Hustlers and going up on stage in like a typical like Jennifer Lopez like sexy revealing outfit. I could just kind of see that happening. <laughs> but I'm going to stick with Laura Dern in this case. Well, let's not forget Madonna won for Evita mm. in this category at the Golden Globes. And I know for a fact that Golden Globes are... Uh, the voters, the Hollywood Foreign Press, love their musicals and love their alternative stuff and love the star factor. So 
would not surprise me if Jennifer Lopez was up there at the podium, but uh, as much as I like all of them, it's a tough choice. Um, I'm still going to stick with Kathy Bates, but Laura Dern, she's, she's amazing. That marriage story scene with her and uh, Ray Liotta at yeah. each other's throat, yeah. how good. Yeah, and that's like in that in that sequence is where she takes off her jacket, and I think yeah. it's become like a gif. Because I remember when it happened, I just kind of went, "Whoa!" <laughs> um, because there's just so many there's things going on, and it's just it's, it's just it's great stuff from her. I really, I really enjoyed her performance, even though I did not like her character, but it's a great performance. Yeah. Um, let's move on now to best performance by an actor in a supporting role. So we got Al Pacino in Irishman. Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes, which I have finally seen, uh, Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Joe Pesci in Irishman, and Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in a Neighborhood, which I've also seen. So it's really cool that I'm actually watching, getting a chance to watch some of these films because of the terrific distribution schedules of in Australian cinemas. It's really hard sometimes to get these films before um, these ceremonies, but I'm glad I could get a chance to see some of them. Um, okay, so this category, Shane, who do you think is going to get the win? Well, Tom Hanks is getting the Cecil. I'm not sure whether that cancels him out here. And I cannot fathom Brad Pitt losing. Mm. I mean, but when I look at it closely, that he's up against four certified Hollywood legends. Yeah. So it's tough. Uh, I'm going to stick with Brad Pitt because he's divert. Like he was so diverting and. Um, solid, and he was on the edge of a couple of personalities in Once Upon a Time at times. He was so good. I'm going to stick with Brad Pitt, but uh, honestly, they're all legends, so it's a it's a mix up. This one, I'm going to go with Brad Pitt as well. I think that um, despite the tough competition he has, and he has some tough competition. I mean, all these performers are like a really great. I think maybe the exception is Anthony Hopkins in The Two Popes. I had a, a, a problem with the way that um, Pope Benedict was portrayed in that movie, but I think that has to more to do with the screenwriting than Hopkins' um, performance. Um, but look, Brad Pitt, he's absolutely terrific in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, uh, Cliff Booth is a character he played, stuntman for Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. I think it's one of his best performances. I really do. It's just such, such fantastic work that he did uh, in that movie. And I could really see him winning the award there. I think this is going to be the Brad Pitt kind of like award season. Um, I could see him getting an Oscar for it as well. Um, yeah. I think the biggest kind of competition maybe might come from one of the Irishman guys, but perhaps they cancel each other out as well. There's a possibility there. Um, and you talked about how Brad Pitt is surrounded by four Hollywood legends. Well, I mean, Brad Pitt himself is also a Hollywood legend. Um, or even though he very, might, very true. Very yeah, true. I, I mean, know. he's the youngest there, yeah. um, which is weird because he's almost like he's over fifty <laughs> um, when compared to the. Um, but if compared to the other people, he is the youngest there, and, uh, and I can see where you're coming from with that. But um, yeah, look, it's a stacked category here. It's great competition, but I'm going to say Brad Pitt as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're like me. You, you've loved his many performances oh, over yeah. the years. Yeah. Uh, 12 Monkeys yeah. and Seven and Fire Club and, you know, the, the list goes on. He's so good. Burn After Reading. So he's, he's really good at comedy and action and drama. And, you know, he's been campaigning. Him, Leo and Qu Quentin Tarantino have sort of been campaigning their movie in the last couple of months. And, yeah. and that helps. And when it comes to Al Pacino and Joe Pesci, I think they were both amazing in the movie. Very, very good. But... They haven't been campaigning, no. and it's a little different. They probably won't even attend. I think Joe Pesci's already said he's not going, so it's, it'll be interesting. But none that that should matter. Uh, it's just such an awesome category. If any of them won, I'd be kind of happy because you might know a little more detail about the Pope than I do, but I do think that Anthony Hopkins, just in his betrayal for me as an actor, uh, was brilliant. Oh yeah, he was really good at it, but I just think the uh, the um, characterization of Benedict was really off, um, especially in, in regards. But wasn't it? It was based on fact, but wouldn't they have fabricated it like they often do? Well, it, it's based on a play um, by um, the, right. the uh, yeah. uh, scriptwriter. I think his name's. Um, oh, I'm just uh, drawing a blank here. The scriptwriter's name. I got it written down. The Anthony McCartan, who's actually a New Zealand screenwriter. Um, so he right. did. Um, he wrote Darkest Hour. He wrote Theory of Everything, and he wrote Bohemian Rhapsody as well. And a lot of people have talked about the you know Bohemian Rhapsody and the historical inaccuracies in regards to that film and some of the characterizations of the Very characters true. in that movie too. And I think it's the same with the two popes. I think 
and just to go off on a little tangent about the two popes, the two popes is essentially, it's set in history, but it's not naturally set in fact. They never had a meeting like that. It's uh, it, it's born off from the mind of the screenwriter and his own kind of uh, relationship with Catholicism, which he was once a Catholic, no longer. And kind of like him kind of like letting out his own uh, frustrations in regards to the old church versus the new church and using gotcha. these two popes as a representation of that. Um, and I totally buy, I understand where he's coming, uh, coming from in regards to that. And it's really cool. And I think it's a really well-made film and really well-written film, but it's not really a factual kind of movie um, gotcha. in regards to that. Except for um, a lot of the history in regards to um, Pope Francis' history, a lot of that's actually true. Um, all the stuff that happened to in him, with him in Argentina and such. Um, but I digress. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a good performance, but for me, out of the five, to me, that's kind of like my least favorite of them. Um, and the Pacino thing is interesting because I definitely don't think Joe Pesci is going to show up because... No, it's not his thing, right? I mean, you, do you remember his speech for the Oscar when he won for Goodfellas? It was uh, two words. It, I was about to say, wasn't it two or three words? Two words. <laughs> Thank you, and that's it. And you left the stage. You know, he's just, this isn't just his thing. Pacino, however, is a five-time Golden Globe winner, and he was always there, always there to pick up the gong. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think he will be there with Scorsese and such, and they'll have a good time. You know, it's it's the Golden Globes. Everyone gets drunk, and you know, Ricky Gervais makes fun of you. That's pretty much uh, your night. So, well, I'm looking forward to what Ricky's got to say. And, oh yeah, and I mean, Joe gave up acting basically, yeah. as far as I was aware, and he was you know brought back by Martin and the cast that he gathered. So, you know, I'm really stoked that he's been nominated and that's great if he doesn't want to go he doesn't want to go not his thing i get it but he, he's still going to be commended and clapped when his name comes up do you know that he's actually a singer as well yeah no i did not know that he's got that's an right. album out right now it's an album of duet so he's got different pop stars and such singing just like classic okay. kind of sinatra so his forte is kind of like that that kind of like um crooner lounge singer kind yeah. of thing sinatra and what have you he's been singing for he's saying actually before he acted and he was like one of the people um, responsible for the formation of um, the four seasons um, in Frankie Valley um, as well so he's, he's a really interesting uh, man uh, Joe Pesci and anyone out there should really kind of check out his uh, his vocal stylings and you might be uh, impressed by them I'm kind of surprised he's never been uh, in a musical or anything because I think he'll just he'll do really well in that um, but let's move on now um, next category is a performance by an actress in uh, musical or comedy. So you've got Anna Diamas in Knives Out, Aquafina in The Farewell, Beanie Feldstein in Booksmart, finally saw Booksmart, loved it, uh, Kate Blanchett, Where'd You Go, Bernadette, and Emma Thompson in Late Night. Now, Shane, for me, this is the trickiest category for me, but I came to a relatively reasonable uh, pick. What about you? Who do you, who do you think is going to win this one? I actually think this is the easiest. Aquafina. Yeah, that's why I think well. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, I hate going against Queen Kate, um, being Australian royalty, and Beanie is got like a lot of uh, Hollywood history and family history behind her. Emma Thompson's a legend, and Anna Diarmas, she was great in yeah. in uh, Knives Out. I love the movie, but I think it was more of an ensemble movie where they all shined together rather than just like individual performances, although we will get to Daniel Craig eventually. But Aquafina, I, I can't see her losing for this uh, at all. She, she is a comedian, better known for rapping and, com- and comedy, and then she put in this really heartfelt performance in a solid movie. I think she's got it. Yeah, I uh, think Aquafina as well. Out of all those five nominees for this category, I can see Aquafina actually getting an Oscar nomination for her performance. Um, I think so. I, like, I definitely think there's potential there for that. Um, of, in, but every performance here I've seen, the only one I haven't seen is Kate Blanchett's in Where'd You Go, Bernadette? And by all indication, reviews-wise, that movie, not only did it, was it made, like, made partly anything... Uh, box office wise, but the re- reactions to it um, critic, um, by critics has been very poor. Um, it's not getting any good um, reviews whatsoever. So it's kind of odd to see her there, but, it's, but look, again, it's a Golden Globes. They love their stars. Um, Beanie Feldstein was terrific in Book Smart. The younger sister of Jonah Hill, I did not know that. Isn't that fasc- fascinating? Um, and yeah, it, yeah, I wasn't aware of that either until recently. Yeah. And then you just have to you just have to look at her and yeah. you can tell. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, and she's terrific. Emma Thompson, 
legend Anna Diamas, upcoming actress. Um, she's going to be playing Marilyn Monroe in a movie by um, Australian uh, director Andrew Dominic. It's going to be called Blonde. It's coming out uh, this year. Uh, but yeah, Aquafina of all of them, I think really has the potential, like I said, to get Oscar nom uh, nominate a nomination. And it's such a, a really strong performance as well. And um, it's quite interesting, isn't it, uh, in regards to her uh, evolution uh, from, you know, I think her background is a, as a hip-hop artist of some sort or a rapper. Yes, yeah, rap, um, rap hip-hop, hip -hop and, and um, stand-up comedy, and then uh, Crazy Rich Asians, of yep. course. She was over the top in that, and... Ocean's Eight, she was in that too. Um, yeah, yeah, I think she's great. Yeah, I think so as well. And um, it's really great to see how she's progressing in her acting career. And I think she's this is really going to be uh, the first of many. Uh, she's such a talented actor. And um, that that movie especially, uh, The Farewell, I know you're a big fan of art, aren't you, Shane? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm glad that we've got the same pick on this one. I think we do. Um, let's move on to the next one, Dan. I think this one... Uh, might be. I think we might have different uh, picks here, but uh, let's see. Uh, best performance by an actor in a musical or comedy. So you got Daniel Craig in Knives Out, Eddie Murphy in Dolomite is My Name, Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Roman Griffith Davis in Jojo Rabbit, and Taron Egerton in Rocketman. Shane, what say you? Well, they can't give it to Taron Eg Egerton, can they? Uh, like another musical two years in a row after mm. Rami Malek last year, can yeah. they? I don't think so. And I didn't pick him. One. No. Well, I Eddie Murphy because, one, just to get him back there is a big deal. Getting to, getting to attend is a big deal. He's just on SNL. And we talked about that on our last podcast. He was doing it. He has since done it, and it, he knocked it out of the park. Uh, I can't see him getting any competition other than maybe Leo for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But as as great as I thought he was in that, I do think Brad sort of overshadowed uh, overshadowed him a little bit as a supporting actor. And Daniel Craig, I mean, that is just awesome. He's been nominated. He was hilarious. If there's going to be an upset, it's him. Mm. It'll be Daniel Craig. Uh, to me, it's this is a tough one. Um, I'm happy for the young actor Roman Griffith Davis, although I didn't really like Jojo Rabbit. He was good in it, and so was uh, Sam Rockwell, and so was Scully Hansen. But, um, yeah, I'm going to tip Eddie for this one, but uh, I'm not, not with a lot of confidence. But, yeah, Eddie Murphy. You and I, we're so similar to mate. Eddie Murphy for me as well, for Dollar Mate is my you name. There you go, yeah. It's, it's like a comeback movie for it you. It is. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's actually a really good film as well. I, mm. I, I really liked it. Craig Brewer is the director of that film. He did Hustled and Flow. He did the remake of Footloose, which I thought was pretty cool as well. Black Snake Moan with Samuel Jackson. He's really, he's, I think he's a really strong director. And I really like what they did with that movie, with that story. And Eddie Murphy's performance is terrific. It's funny. At times it can be moving. There are moments there for like a drama as well. Um, it's just, it is, it is the Eddie Murphy of old. Uh, as in the Eddie Murphy are back of the Beverly Hills Cop kind of uh, coming to America days, but done within the yes, Eddie Murphy. Yes, it's not the Eddie Murphy of old from the Nutty Professor. No, not that. No, I'm talking, we're talking like <laughs> like before, even before that, like the raunchy kind of Eddie Murphy days, not the not the happy, you know, uh, not to say happy, but uh, not the safe, uh, child-friendly Eddie Murphy. We're talking about the old no. school Eddie Murphy, but done within the Eddie Murphy, the wisdom of Eddie Murphy of today, the, all the acting experience that he's accumulated or, or over that time. And it's a terrific turn. Um, I, I I could see Eddie Murphy winning the Golden Globe, but I do not see him getting the Oscar nomination. And Ooh, I think okay. I, I think, and I'm going to make a, a prediction here that he's if he wins for Dolomite, he's my name, and DiCaprio, who who is his competition in this category, gets nominated for Oscar, which could be a potential. I mean, we talked about our um, Oscar picks uh, for actor not long ago, and we and DiCaprio was someone we both mentioned. Yes. There is going to be such a uh, uproar in regards to that because we've seen before in regards to the Oscar so white uh, controversy and, and on social uh, media. Uh, yeah. I can really see that happening as well. That's just a prediction. That's if Eddie Murphy wins though. There's a very good chance, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio could win it and then you know, a lot of the jokes are going to come in regards to whether Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is actually a comedy, but that hasn't stopped people winning in that category. You know, you know I've said it before, and I'm all for diversity, but 
I think people who get nominated are nominated for their talent and their role, not their colour or background or mm. gender, you know? I, I mean, I, I would love to see Eddie Murphy nominated for an Oscar. I mean, he got nominated for Dream Girls, yeah. right? Yes, yes. And lost, yes. and he was very upset about that. Yes, <laughs> yes, lost to Alan Arkin. That was a really interesting one, though, because he was winning everything yes. up to that point. Um, it kind of reminded me when Sylvester Stallone was nominated for Creed. He was winning everything up to Oscars, and then when it came to the Oscar, they gave it to a kind of like more, uh, I don't want to say the word serious, because, you know, it's kind of pretentious to say, but more of a um, traditionally sound, dramatic kind of actor. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I think that can happen sometimes in the Oscars where <clears throat> the Golden Globes, you can get away with giving that an Oscar, uh, an award to a Sylvester Stallone or Eddie Murphy or a Jennifer Lopez or a Madonna. Um, but when it comes to, or a Jim Carrey, remember he won twice for comedy uh, for Man on the Moon and for Truman Show, but he didn't get that Oscar nomination. And that was, a, no. that, that's something that kind of, you know, very much, it's something that he was really upset about as well. Um, yeah, well, when I think about it, Man on the Moon and even Truman Show were both such great performances. Oh, it's yeah. very surprising he didn't get the nomination. Especially for, for those Truman, two. especially for Truman Show. To this day, I think that's uh, one of the great movies. Peter Weir directed that, and it's just a, it's a, such a prophetic movie as well. A lot of the stuff we saw in that movie, I think we're seeing kind of like in real life now. Happening. As well. Yeah, I, I, it's yeah, terrific, terrific film. All right, um, let's move on now to Best Performance by Actress in a Drama. So we have Charlize Theron in Bombshell, Cynthia Erivo in Harriet, Renee Zellweger in Judy, Saoirse Ronan in Little Women, and Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. Who do you think is going to win this one, Shane? Well, Renee Zellweger has been like the favourite now for months. Yeah. Uh, but it's the movie itself hasn't had any comments or fire beneath it to mm. sort of prompt her winning uh and after seeing bombshell little women i don't know it's, it's, it's a tough one i think scarlett johansson is so good in marriage story yeah uh but then charlie's as well you know she's got the makeup on and she's playing a, an actual person similar to what renee's this is a tough one for me um i'm gonna tip scarlett Johansson. I haven't seen Harriet, so I, I actually can't uh, really go with Cynthia Erivo. Although I liked her, uh, I liked her in other movies that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, and Saoirse Ronan's great too, but great young actress. But this year, I'm going to say Renee's fire is sort of um, simmering out a little bit, and I think Scarlett Johansson might um, win this one. That's really interesting you say that. I look, I'm still going to go with Renee Zellweger because. It's a kind of performance um, that... She's brilliant, don't she, get me wrong. It's like, you know, you've got the makeup and she's doing her own singing and it's just a, it's a dramatic kind of... It's such a terrific dramatic turn. And Golden and, Globes, they love their musicals, so that's true. They do. We were talking about Eddie Murphy doing a come. This is very much a comeback performance as well in regards to Renee Zellberg because she's been out of the picture yeah. for a little bit. There's movies here or there, but nothing to the degree of what this film has or, say, a Bridget Jones diary had before that as well. And... I'm still going to go Renee, but the Scarlett Johansson one's really interesting because not only did she give a terrific performance in Marriage Story, but she's been having an incredible year. Um, we've, we've, we've spoken before, Endgame, um, Jojo Rabbit, and Marriage Story. I mean, that's a great trifecta right there. It's really kind of great um, uh, variety of performance as well, and she's been around. She's a child actor as well, been around for a really long time. I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlett Johansson picks it up, but I'm going to go with Renee on this one. You don't think Charlize can maybe swindle in? She's she's amazing. Have you ever seen Bombshell? I haven't seen it yet, but okay. just reading some of the reviews for it so far, I don't think there's enough uh, goodwill bef behind the movie as a whole as there is behind the performances, and I think yeah, that, might, that might hurt it. Uh, I'm watching it uh, in a couple weeks. I cannot wait because I'm a big fan of the actors involved in such a interesting story as well i know it's been tackled before what was the um the russell crowe um sh uh, show yes game? and russell crowe was and, and naomi watts was in it very good uh television series and so basically bombshell is the same story about the fox news uh fiasco with roger ailes That's and right, all yeah. his horrible uh atrocities that he did and and charlie theron's character uh blows basically the lid on him and then he gets other women to to step forward and and uh yeah 
stand up for themselves because he was so terrible behind the scenes, this Roger Ailes. But Roger Bombshell Ailes, yeah. is like a, a smaller version of it, like a streamlined version of it. But her performance is, is unreal. And she's she's won an Oscar before. She's yeah. so good anyway. And it's a tough one to me. I, I think Renee will probably win, but I would, I'm still tipping Scarlett Johansson because she's been nominated a couple of times now. I don't think she's won. And this story relies on its screenplay and its acting and she is like adam driver she's just amazing and not to mention i mean the movie itself is about a couple in the entertainment industry going through a divorce and i imagine a lot of people maybe voters um a lot of people in that audience in the golden globes are going to be could you know empathize with what maybe these characters gone through because it is based on Loosely based on real events in regards to the director Norm Bombach's life, and like I said before, it's a it's a story about a couple in the industry who have been separated because yeah. they have their own priorities as to what they want with their careers and how it's going to affect their family, and because of that, there's a clear split. Uh, it, 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 it develops, um, and I think a lot of people will emphasize with that, and it's very much a uh, uh, a chance that Scala could win uh, based on that as well. Um, I just think that Renee Zellweger's performance is so powerful, um, it's going to see her through. But you're right in regards to the movie because a lot of people, when they, when they talk about the film, they don't talk about the movie as a whole. They talk about her performance only. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's not really a great movie. Yeah. It's it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah. it's, it's not really uh, an uplifting movie i know the subject about her was not that um happy yep. at times and then they had to tell the depressing side of it but when you get musicals like la la land and and greatest showman and that uh you, you got that high um high octane feeling whereas judy didn't have that no not at all it's very much a hollywood tragedy more than anything else and maybe yeah. some of that could um could have a negative negative impact uh, but may, then again, maybe not, because much like Bombshell, we show these that are on where you're dealing with issues in regards to the Me Too movement and stuff like that as well, and abuse of actresses within the entertainment industry. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see that category, because I think out of all of them, that category could possibly be the most competitive. Um, but then again, there's so many great performances in the other categories as well, uh, which we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, best performance by an actor in a drama. So we have Adam Driver in Marriage Story, um, Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory, Christian Bale in Ford vs. Ferrari, Joaquin Phoenix in Joker, and Jonathan Price in The Two Pope Shane, who do you think is going to win this one? Okay, Matt, can we just give uh, five out? <laughs> <laughs> because, honestly, I can't separate these guys. Mm. I, I honestly can't. Uh, I think, and this is going to be a bigger upset uh, pick than Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. I'm thinking Antonio Banderas. Yeah, oh, interesting. Because of his body of work. Mm -hmm. And he's so good in Pain and Glory. Now, if there's going to be an upset, it could be Christian Bale. I mean, he got it for Vice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they love him. Uh, but Adam, Adam Driver, and of course, there's the Joaquin uh, Phoenix factor in Joker. He was so unsettling and so good. And then Jonathan Price was really good too. I don't know what you thought of him as the Pope because you would see it from a different angle than me. But they were all so good. If I can give out five, I'm going to give out five. But as an upset pick, I, I have a feeling Joaquin might win, but um, I'm going gonna, gonna to go with Antonio. I look. I like John, love Jonathan Price in the Two Popes. I think I, well, I mentioned before on a podcast. If you put, do you him, think he was better than Ant yes, Anthony Hopkins? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think that what he done with the character is more um, in 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 unison with the spirit, and also they kind of like the um, what a lot of people have written about him and how he's been portrayed, and, and it's like very much. Uh, very much what a lot of people think of Pope Francis is more to the soul and spirit of what who Pope Francis is. And I think a lot of that has to do with because we delve into his backstory much more than uh, Pope Benedict's. Um, but And, okay, the funny thing is, because you like the Irishman a lot more than me, and he's taken, basically, uh, uh, Rob, as far as I'm concerned, in this five, do you think? Um, look... I was surprised that Robert De Niro didn't get nominated, but, you know, I watched The Irishman recently with my wife. I, um, I finally convinced her to watch it. Had, we had to watch it in installments because it's such a long movie, and she was really interesting. She said to me that she really liked Pacino's and Pesci's performances, but for to her, De Niro really came across as just a little too... Um, but I thought, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. 
a little too, uh, I'm not going to say the word bored, but she just says that sometimes the blank face expression that he does doesn't carry enough emotion flat. behind it. You're flat, exactly. Now, for me, as a big Robert De Niro fan, I'm, I'm used to that. I mean, to me, that just speaks to a lot. Just his acting style, he does a lot of that. It's just like a part of his kind of repertoire. He's the master of the blank stare. I mean, he, he just he does that. But for a lot of other people, including my, including my wife and other people as well, and I imagine as well, yeah. a lot of pe- voters as well, they just found that it was just maybe too much of that. Um, especially when you're you're flanked by both Pesci and Pacino and like John and um, Stephen Graham is terrific in the movie as well and all these other slew of characters who bring more kind of personality to proceedings. And when compared to say like a Jonathan Price and what he does in that movie, speaks Spanish and he just like you know talks about the inner turmoil of his character and True. the depiction and everything else and what Christian Bale does and Antonio Banderas and Joaquin and Adam, they just bring more personality. Their performances have personality, and I think De Niro's performance doesn't have that um, personality there. And I think it's going to cost him in the end. Um, yeah, I, I, I yeah. You know, if you asked me a month ago, I would have thought that De Niro was a lock, and I think I might have mentioned that in our actor predictions. I, I think you did. I don't think so anymore. And now I've got to take it back. I think just lately, SAG didn't go for him. Golden Globes didn't go for him. And you mentioned uh, the trouble, the um, the history between Golden Globes and De Niro as well in regards to that. Um, that is right. Yeah. And um, I, I just don't, I can't see it with the, the Oscars now either. Um, but in regards to this category, I'm you're going to go with Antonio Banderas. I'm going to go with Adam Driver. Um, I yeah. think this is going to be his year. I think just like Scarlett Johansson, he's had a hell of a year um, with not only uh, um, you know Marriage Story, but you know like how Scarlett Johansson had the big blockbuster in Avengers. He had Star Wars. Um, I think he's ter- really terrific in this movie. And he had the report. Too. Yeah, the report, of course. Thank you for reminding me that he had the report, which Annette Benny was nominated for you know, in supporting actress. So I think he's really terrific in the role. He really is. He's he's a character who. And maybe it's because it was written by the pen of his of the of the person who is uh, the the character is influenced by. He really comes across as empathetic, despite the fact that there's a lot of things that he does that isn't so isn't so. Um, and I think a lot of that comes down to Adam Driver as an actor as well, and it's kind of like a he has a personality towards uh, in, in him that really kind of like evokes that kind of. Um, uh, sympathy. That he, he he comes across as a as a as a good guy, a very complicated guy. It's a really complicated performance and character. He gives that character soul. He gives it spirit. He gives it emotion. Um, and despite a lot of the uh, bad things that the character has done, uh, in the, that led to the breakdown of his marriage, you can't help but feel sorry for him. And I think. I don't think every, every actor could have done that. And Adam Driver did do that really well. Um, Joaquin Phoenix could be very much a strong personality uh, um, potential to win. I just think that um, the controversy surrounding the movie and maybe because the, the performance itself is just a little too uh, a little too strong, if, the, if that could be a reasoning there. Um, yeah. Maybe it's kind of like the same with the Renee Zellweger kind of thing. The performance is strong about the movie itself, maybe not a lot of people are really getting into. Uh, but well, I don't know, because the yeah. movie made a massive amount at the it box did. office. It did, it did. But I'm just talking more in regards to voters' perception more than anything yeah. else, you know. Um, and so I'm going to say Alan Driver, but I wouldn't be surprised if Joaquin Phoenix uh, gets a win as well. Well, that, that scene of Joaquin getting into the fridge, emptying <laughs> the fridge and then, and then closing the door, yeah, I yeah. mean, that's, that was enough that, said, like, yeah, it was so good. But I think uh, with Pain and Glory, it was about, uh, you know, Pedro, a non-official life in theatre and film, yeah. and Antonio had worked with him for so long. So that performance to me about movie making was huge. And I don't know, Antonio is such a great actor. I, I just think they might. You know, it's one of those career awards. But then Christian Bale, he, if anything, he could upset. I mean, in Ford versus Ferrari, he was such a solid he was. performance. And, I, and I, may, I imagine a lot of people didn't expect him to get the nod because, if anything, I, I thought he would have gotten um, nominated for supporting because maybe he and Damon being leads in a movie might have cancelled each other out. That clearly didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, I thought that too. But that, when you think of screen time, I think he did have some more more than... Because he had his like scenes with his wife and yeah. everything in it, and his, his child. So uh, um, that's why he's nominated because he had a little few more emotional scenes. I yeah. think. Very true. Very true. Uh, let's move over now to the director uh, category. So we've got um, Jan Hu Bong for Parasite, 
Um, Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Sam Mendes for 1917, Todd Phillips for Joker. I think a really strong, strong representation of the directing craft here. Um, but only there can be only one as the immortal Highlander has reminded us four years now. Um, so who are you going to pick for this category? Well, oh, I'll keep it brief. Um, my heart wants Quentin to win for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, that movie was so good. I've seen it five times now. It's amazing. But I, I just have a feeling Martin Scorsese's got this. Yeah. It, it, it just can't. I don't think he can lose it, Matt. Todd Phillips, oh, great that he's there. You know, the director of The Hangover is nominated for an award. That's amazing. Sam Mendes in 19, for 1917. It's a really remarkable achievement, what he, he did. And Bong, I mean, Parasite is an extraordinary film, the mainstream so to speak but he's been making movies for so long for him to be nominated is a big deal yeah so it, it is a tough category but i cannot as much as i want qt to get the uh gold statue i think martin scorsese has it i'm gonna go with scorsese as well but out of all of them i think tarantino has potential to uh, upset him i really do think so because um scorsese is i've mentioned before he's just an you know, institution in regain not in Hollywood but in filmmaking as a whole. Um, and I also think that you know a lot of people went away from the 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 little debates and a little kind of like back and forth between Scorsese and the whole Avengers comic book movie thing and, and well it and, made news didn't it, it, it and social news, media yeah. news and a lot of people left that thinking that Scorsese left worse for wear. You know I think it's a total opposite. I think Martin Scorsese stood up for something. I think a lot of people and you know, I think even to a certain extent, myself included, we're kind of getting a little, a little, a, not enough's enough of the whole kind of like you know. Yeah, I'm sick of it as well. Yeah. And I mean, good for him if he wants to say that he hasn't seen it, seen any of those um, Marvel films, and he's not interested, or he just thinks that they're their own thing. Uh, what does he call them? He called them he a called them, um, um, amusement, yeah, park. amusement park. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw it, Matt, but there was a recent round table at, for Hollywood Reporter and he was asked about Joker because, of course, Todd Phillips basically referenced uh, Taxi Driver yeah. and paid homage to it. Yeah. And Martin said, or Mr. Scorsese, maybe I should call him, said, no, I haven't, even, I haven't seen it. He goes, I've heard that he's... Uh, referencing my work but i haven't seen it interesting it's, it's i think it's really interesting because for a long time i was saying um in regards to potential of avengers endgame in regards to maybe getting a nomination and and all this time i've been talking i'm about, glad you jumped off that band yeah, I, I i know but it's what, <laughs> what i find really interesting is that all this time i was talking about that movie being the one superhero movie that's going to get nominated and I forgot about the fact that Joker is also a superhero movie because it's so against anything that a superhero movie is because it's it reminds of like a late 70s, early 80s Scorsese film. But is it a superhero movie? It's I don't, based like on Black, Pan yeah. Black Panther was yeah. a couple of years ago. And, yeah. and of course, if Endgame was nominated, that is. But I don't call Joker a superhero movie. It's more of a spin-off character study. Definitely a comic book to me. Though. Definitely a comic book movie, though. I mean, isn't, isn't the oh, definition yeah, yeah, of a comic yeah. book movie has to be based on the source material that it comes from? I think that's different, though. A superhero movie and a comic book movie is different. Sin City yeah. is a comic book movie. Yeah. You know, like uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. That's a comic book movie. Yeah. It's not a superhero movie. So Joker, to me, it is in that superhero realm, and I, I'm probably going to get, like, uh, you know, fanboys hating me now but i don't think you would call it a superhero movie is yeah. batman even mentioned i think it's brief he's briefly mentioned or something uh, with bruce wayne yeah and that but that's it yeah. you know like i don't know i would call it a comic book film rather than a superhero film that's a very good point there um but yeah i'm gonna go scorsese as well but like you tarantino i think has potential he really does have potential to get away. Uh, they'll give it. They'll give him screenplay. They always do. Mm. Uh, he's a great writer. We know that, but he hasn't. He's yet to be yet to win anything for directing, and I hope he does for this. Okay, let's move on now to the film categories. Uh, okay, here we are. So let's talk about the musical or comedy category. So we got Dolomite is my name, Jojo Rabbit, Knives Out, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Rocket Man. Shane, what do you think? Who's going to win this category? 
it's once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> and, and its only competition is Knives Out. Yeah, uh, they're they're all pretty good. Uh, JJ Rabbit, I'm not a fan of, uh, but Dolomite and Rocket Man are both very good films. I enjoyed them immensely, but Knives Out is the only uh, competition for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's got it. It's a lock. I'm saying a lock as well for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. However, I think the biggest competition that has is going to be Jojo. I can't, oh, really? I, I can't see, and we're going to talk about it later when we make our predictions for best film at the Oscars, I can't see Knives Out getting a nom for Oscar. I can see Jojo getting a nom for Oscar. I think I think that kind of thing has potential in regards to having an upset um, for this category. I do think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is going to get it. Um, based on the fact that, look, it's got screenplay, director, punch of actors, noms, Jojo Rabbit for all the love that it has. No one is really talking about Taika Waititi um, in regards to his work as a director. And I, in regards to that, I mean awards-wise. Um, I don't remember seeing him nominated for anything for an award in regards to director. I think, like, adapted screenplay, he's definitely got it. But as a director, there's been no nominations going his way. Um, well, I don't think he really realistically should no, either. No, neither. No, I don't think so either. Um, let's move over now to Best Picture Drama. Uh, so we have 1917, Joker, Marriage Story, The Irishman, and The Two Popes. I'm going to just say, I'm going to go with Irishman on this. What about yourself, Shane? Uh, I, I knew you were going to say that. And I'm, I'm thinking The Irishman will win, but I am tipping Marriage Story. Oh. To me, that was a perfect movie. I, I, I remember seeing it, knowing nothing about it, and just being encapsulated by it. Uh, it is perfect. I loved Mary's story. They're all they're all worthy though. I've got to say, even the two popes, nineteen seventeen. Then there's there's imperfections about both of those. Um, but the other three, Irishman, Joker, and Marriage Story, are all top notch. But I'm going to tip Marriage Story. And I knew you'd go for Irishman, Matt. No, no surprise there. See, if Noah Bombach was nominated for director, I would have said Marriage Story had a much stronger chance. Yeah, because, that was, that was, yeah. Because of that, if say if say he got the slot that Todd Phillips had, for example, say t- take Todd Phillips out, putting on Bomb back in, I'm gonna go. I would have said Marriage Story had a really strong chance as well. I just yeah. don't see it happening because of that. And also, if we're gonna go Tarantino for screenplay over Noah Bombard for Marriage Story, then you no, know, there's a potential there that it might not that even weakens his chances even more. Um, out of all the films here, I think the biggest potential for usurping the Irishman is perhaps 1917, because that movie's come out recently in um, international markets, so more critics have seen it. It's really gone up in stock. Um, and it's really- oh, yeah, you look at all five movies, yeah. and 1917, realistically, is would be the hardest movie to direct. Yeah, I think so. It, it, the, the things that go on and the camera shots and, and the directing of the, all the people and everything... Uh, marriage story is almost like in uh, closed situations, so it's like a play. Joker would also would have been a bit hard to direct, I think, at times. Um, the Irishman, you just got Scorsese doing his thing, and the Two Popes is also like a play, as you know, as you told me, it's based on a play. So there's a lot of singular scenes in closed places. Yeah. So 1917, if you're going on. Uh, effort and scope, you'd say that's going to win, but it's it's a tough one. Uh, I'll stick with Marriage Story, though, I think. It's going to be interesting to watch. It's going to be in a couple of days. We're going to find out, and we can tr- talk again in regards to that. Let's talk about some random predictions, though, for tonight. The Golden Globes, everyone knows what the Globes are about. Everyone gets lit it up, and this year is going to be a little different as well. So I've read that it's going to be vegan meals for surf for everyone. So <laughs> I did not know that. If any kind of like Hollywood guys out there are on a keto diet, they're going to be very upset about this. Uh, yeah, wow. this is just something I read earlier today, late yesterday, I think it was. Uh, vegan meals, so non non meat uh, meals out there. So that's going to be <clears throat> really interesting. Um, okay, what about random kind of predictions, Shane? What have you got? Uh, in regards to potential things that could happen on a night? Uh, a couple of I'll, I'll mention that we haven't talked about yet is animated feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Frozen 2, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, The Lion King, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. I think Toy Story 4 has got it, I, personally. I think Frozen 2 was pretty awesome, but when you look at The Lion King, apparently that doesn't qualify for animated movie for an Oscar, no. but it does for the Golden Globes, okay. so it's a bit all odd. Uh, and the other one I want to mention is Cats, 
has a song nomination, uh, Beautiful Ghosts by Andrew Lloyd Webber and Taylor Swift. Now, mm-hmm. I'm one of the very few people that, that critics and, and movie analysts that enjoy Cats. I thought it was fantastic, actually. Uh, and I don't think the song's going to win, but the fact it's even been nominated, I think, is great. It gets a little bit more exposure and, and probably people laughing at it. However, in that category you've got into the unknown from frozen 2 the rocket man song by elton john i'm gonna love me again and spirit from beyonce from the lion king and a song in harriet called stand up now pretty strong category i've listened to all songs uh haven't seen harriet but i've listened to the music and i'm gonna tip that one as an upset Hmm. stand up interesting um by cynthia erivo now yeah, she's she's a really good singer. Yeah, but uh, I think you know I have a feeling that they want star power, so they'll probably get either Taylor Swift or uh, Elton John. You know, there'll be someone like that up as a winner. But uh, you never know. And I, I just thought I'd mention those two animated feature and, and song. I'm going to make a prediction that there's going to be a huge backlash on social media to Ricky Gervais. I, I think that... He uh, probably wants that. Though. Yeah, I think he wants that too. But uh, I think that his brand of comedy is just is so perfect. It's I mean, the Golden Globes in the where Hollywood and the entertainment industry is now is just ripe for him to kind of really tear into. Um, you, you got to think about since the time he last hosted, we had the Me Too era. We had all these things in regards to diversity, especially in regards to um, uh, characters and actors who are... Who are of um, trans um, transsexual, um, and I know he, and Donald he, Trump and Don, he got all that stuff as well. I'm bracing for a Catholic joke uh, in regards to the two popes as well. Um, in regards to sexual abuse, I know there's going to be a lot of that stuff because that's one oh, of that's his favorite true, yeah. one of his favorite categories. I think he's going to tear apart everyone, and I think it's going to be a really strong reaction to it because he's already been. Uh, like I mentioned before, there was already an article, I think it was um, IndieWire, that re- had something saying that he's transphobic and because of that he shouldn't be hosting in the first place. So I think he's going to take all of that on and he's going to go out there guns blazing. I'm not going to see, I d- and I do not want to see a tame Ricky Gervais. If, he, if they're going to ask him back and pay him money to take the piss out of Hollywood, then my God, go out there, son, and do it justice because uh, what's the use of watching otherwise, right? <laughs> Oh, it is going to be very, very um, uh, interesting. And I don't think he will have a script that he might read uh, and go off about 80% of it, but he'll do his own thing. And I'm okay with that. As long as he doesn't, he's not cruel and he's too hurtful against certain people or genders or whatever. If, if it's, you know, I can handle uh, strong jokes. And he knows. He's, he's been around long enough to know, and I think the, the Hollywood foreign press wouldn't have asked him back. It's been five years since he's done it, so things, like you said, have changed, and again, I, I'm probably going to get backlash from it, but I'm looking forward to see what he's got to give. You know, we'll see. We will see. Um, let's end the podcast now with our predictions for best film for the Oscars. So this will be our last uh, prediction episode until the Oscar nominations arrive. We've covered the acting categories, uh, we've covered director, and now we're going to go into picture. Now, we don't know how what number of set nominees they're going to have at the Oscars. They leave that option open anywhere between 5 and 10, pretty much. So you and I are going to go for a bunch of films. I have a feeling we're going to talk about this, a lot of the same movies. Might be a surprise here and there. So let's start the ball rolling with you, you Shane. What is your first pick for film at the Oscar? Oh, well, I'll go with the obvious. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, yep. it'll be nominated. It's about Hollywood. It's set in a, in a classic bygone era by a well-loved filmmaker with, with a galaxy of stars. So, yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood's my first pick. I'm going to say I definitely see that happening as well. It's got the subject matter, great director, great performances as well. I think he's going to get a slew of nominations. Um, I think, though, it's going to get trumped in a lot of these categories. Uh, we've, we've, attached, we've perhaps the potential of supporting actor because I do think Brad Pitt's going to win by the Irishman. That's going to be my pick. I think both Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Irishman, actually, are both locks. locks strong, strong locks for this uh, for best film. Uh, in uh, The Irishman, also one of a couple films uh, that's going to represent Netflix as well. Netflix did really well with Roma uh, not long ago. And uh, I think... Um, last year. Yeah, last year. And um, I think that this year, uh, like... 
I think from this year, from now on, Netflix is really going to establish itself as a major player when it comes to awards season. Um, and when and I think a big reason for that is because they're going to have act and directors like proper old school directors like a Martin Scorsese working for him because everyone knows the story of Irishman. It's been in development for a long time. Paramount Pictures had it. They dropped it. No one wanted to pick it up. Netflix came and said, we're going to give you all this money. Scorsese took all that money and made one of the best films in his career, in my opinion. And I well, think it's, it's Paramount gonna... Pictures didn't want to give him the money because nope. of, of silence. Yep, that that was a massive flop, and it was like a, a heartfelt um, movie that he'd wanted to make for years, also, yep. Yep. and it just didn't work. Uh, what to a to a wider audience anyway? So that's why Paramount um, just went, yeah, no. Nah. But little did they know, Netflix were going to like scoop the pool with it. Yeah, and I think they did. Uh, they made a really wise decision. It's a terrific movie, and that's got to be my next pick and one of the locks along with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, what's next on your list, Shane? Uh, well, yeah, just put in The Irishman because everything you just said, exactly. What about yourself, Shane? What's next for you? Uh, what about Marriage Story? We're talking about Netflix. That, that's that got to be nominated as well, right? I think so too, yep. Yep, I think so too. That's another lock for me. For everything I've just already mentioned, that it's it, to me, it's pretty much a, a perfect film, and yeah. it, it's I don't know if it'll win, but it is definitely going to be nominated. I see a win for Driver. I see a win for screenplay, perhaps, or Noah Bombach. Um, film, I don't think it will win either. I don't think Noah Bombach's going to get that directing nod, and usually history dictates that to be a strong contender in picture, you need to have that director nomination. And I just don't see it happening uh, for Noah Bombach. I do think the win, though, is going to be some consolation in a screenplay win. I do think it's going to get nominated, though. Um, and also, I think that Parasite's going to get nominated. That's going to be my next pick. Um, I'm going to consider that a lock as well. I think, And I think Parasite, actually, if, if I were a betting man and I wanted to put money on a sleeper to win, that could possibly be it. Um, I think the favourites are going to be Irishman and Once Upon a Time, but I think Parasite really has potential uh, to win um, and just surprise everyone. Um, and I think if if um, Bong Joon Ho wins director, then everyone's going to be on their toes thinking, "Oh my God, what's going to happen next?" Because if he wins that 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 not uh, category, then I see Parasite winning Best Picture. But it has to win. But it has to be in that circumstance. Um, without the director win, it's not going to have enough um, uh, enough legs behind it. But I, I'm going to predict Parasite as a lock as well. Yeah, Parasite to me is also a lock, and I'll add that to my list. But um, being a winner, I'm not sure. I mean, Roma was was in the mix last year, and, and it won foreign film. And I have a feeling, although Portrait of a Lady on Fire is another foreign film, and uh, I don't know whether The Farewell, because it's a foreign film uh, according to the Golden Globes, is it a foreign film according to the Oscars? I'm not sure. Mm. There's some really good categories uh, here in the foreign film department, but Parasite sort of stands above them all. Yep. Uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire also is a really uh, honest option as well but out of the two i think parasite i agree with you um but joker is my next pick because i think that might get um in the mix as well again i'm not confident it's going to win but it it will have enough votes from the academy to get in to the mix do you think joker is going to be in that higher kind of five six extra long is that going to be one of those picks that's going to be lower post five and six well, I think they'll get like uh, seven or eight mm. this year. I don't think they'll make the nine or ten. Uh, if they do, put in Knives Out because, uh, you know, I, that could get in as well if they have like a high number. No, I, I actually think Joker might be in – I think what they do is a top three. So, you know, I have a feeling that the Joker might get in there. It, Todd Phillips is a very well-liked director. Mm-hmm. And his film, as well as Joaquin's performance, really did resonate with a lot of people, even though it was unsettling. So, yeah, no, I think it'll be it'll be there for sure. Uh, oh, really, almost a lot, almost a lot. If I had to go like the old school method and had to choose five Oscars, uh, 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 five um, nominees like they used to do, that's um, hard, isn't it? If I, if I if I had to do that, my five would be Irishman, Par- uh, Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Marriage Story, and my number five would be 1917. 
I think Dad yeah. is a really, really strong contender. And like I said, recently released in international markets, it's got great reaction. I think um, Sam Mendes' direction, um, especially technically speaking, is incredible. Um, Roger Deakin cinematography as well. But it's also, it's one of those films kind of like, and I think it's something, that this is something that maybe uh, Christopher Dolan's films uh, is can be criticised of at times. Not by me, because I love Chris Nolan's movies, but a lot of people can see the world building, they can see the great technical uh, work done, but sometimes they might, might criticise the performances. I think 1917 has really strong performances in this movie. Um, and I think that really goes a long way in really telling the story um, that has a lot of soul, a lot of heart, so a lot of sorrow as well, and I think that's going to resonate with a lot of a lot of people. Um, and so, 1917 to me is my next pick. That'll be like a top. That'll be like my like a top five lock for me. Um, and then after that, I'll also go for Joker. Um, what about yourself, Shane? Can you see 1917 be a real strong contender? Oh yeah, of course. Like it's a real Oscar worthy film. It, it it's it's got every all the attributes, of course. Uh, uh, but you haven't mentioned Little Women yet. No. Uh, and I do think that's going to be there. I mean, I don't think Greta might get the, uh, a director's nom- a nomination. Um, I'm really not sure because of the competition. But I think a film might overall get a, a nod. Yep. It's, it's, to me, I've seen enough Little Women versions. I think I've seen like 16 or 17 versions mm. of it now. Uh, they're all great and and she has put her own twist on it and I love Greta Gerwig I have liked her acting and her film choices and Lady Bird her first director um, directional debut was amazing but I think she'll uh, might pick up a a nomination for this as best picture although I really don't think it'll win anything I love Little Women I saw it uh, I don't know a month ago or so um, absolutely loved it. It's my first, you know, you've seen 16 or 17 different adaptations. I have not seen one yet. Um, which you haven't seen the, the uh, Winona Ryder I have not, the and, and that is something my wife is really urging me to watch, and I'm going to have to watch it one of these days because <laughs> I do have it on DVD. Um, and I know it's. There gonna... was only one released about three months ago because yeah. I reviewed it on one of my radio stations. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, like literally, there's been TV versions. Yeah. And there's just been so many, and I've not that I'm over it because it is a really classic, good story. And Greta has put her own little uh, twist on a few things. Um, but you not knowing that, obviously, you're going to like it more because of what you didn't know previously with the novel. Yeah, and I definitely had to. I had to rely. I, I saw the film uh, with a fellow film critic of us, um, Richard Gray from the Real Bits, and he is uh, he he knows a lot about literature and books and such. And so he had to kind of fill me in in little parts, like afterwards, like where I'd say, "Was that really part of the original source material?" <laughs> that day, because there's some things that kind of you can kind of tell that was more made for a modern audience than say an audience back from like the 80s or even the 90s. Um, and by all the power too, and I think it worked really well. Greta Gerwig did a terrific job. I can see Greta, if not getting a nomination for director, I can see maybe adapted screenplay noms yeah, uh, going that way. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's a possibility there. I can, but I can also see, like, if we're talking like, if it's like seven or eight nominees in regards to um, uh, Best Picture, that Little Women get it in there. Because that's a film that's recently come in as well. Um, what about Ford versus Ferrari? Because I got that on my list, but a little further down the line. Definitely one of the best movies of the year. Well, I remember saying that straight after it finished, and when I saw it, I loved it. But I don't know. It, it, it's done well at the box office, but is it on people's minds? Other than Christian Bale, I'm not really hearing much about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you? Do you? I think Knives Out, if anything, there's going to be like a, a little extra movie jump into the mix. I think Knives Out is the one that might get there over Ford versus Ferrari, but they're both amazing films. I think both of those films are, will be battling out for those lower 9, 10 positions. I yeah. think above both of them will be Jojo Rabbit. Um, I'm not a big fan of the film. I'm not, no. you're, you're, I know you're not a big fan of the film either, I, but a lot of people really, really, really like that movie, and it is getting a lot of nominations in regards to the Globes and the SAGs and um, what else? Uh, I'm sure when BAFTA's come out, he's going to get SAGs is SAGs is very important. It is like the winners of SAGs. I mean, we we love our Globes and that, but they're a little. It's a little different. They work it differently to what the SAGs do, and then the BAFTAs. Yeah. So I, I could see Jojo Rabbit being a real BAFTAs movie as well. Yeah. So, so I I, yeah. I I see it 
in there. Um, so if we're just talking about what we had so far, we, we've covered around nine movies. So we have um, Irishman, Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, Marriage Story, 1917, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women. Um, and then that's eight right there. So that will be a solid eight uh, film. So if we're going to go nine or ten, are we saying maybe Ford versus Ferrari and Knives Out could potentially be that nine, ten? I will go Knives Out and I haven't seen it yet, but Uncut Gems. Mm. They're, because Uncut Gems to me is getting so much buzz. We've talked about it before. I, I still haven't seen it. I can't judge it. It's only been playing in uh, limited cinemas in the US and previously before that at uh, film festivals. But from what I know, uh, it is well liked by a lot of critics. So uh, I will go with as an extra two Knives Out and Uncut Gems. But we're forgetting about the two Popes as well. Shane, what about Bombshell? Do you think that has potential to be uh, nominated for Best Film? I uh, don't think so. I really enjoyed the performances in it, but the actual movie itself has flaws. So, no, uh, um, I w- would go Uncut Gems and, and Knives Out over that. I'm going to say Ford f- versus Ferrari maybe has a little more than Uncut uncut Gems there because it does have the Christian Bale uh, nominee. I mean, if Christian Bale gets nominated for actor for example, there's at least a little bit of juice there that Uncut Gems doesn't have. But then again, Adam Sandler could get that nomination too. I mean, it's really, it's such a, a lot of people, you know, it's really interesting. A lot of people are actually saying that when they're doing their coverage of um, Best of 2019, that some people say it's been a bit of a lackluster year. I'm totally on the other side of that. I think this no, it was really a good strong, year. I think so too. I think it's been a really strong year. I think we've seen a really good, a strong um performances especially and some of the filmmaking has been terrific um uh, and i don't know why people were saying that because like you and i we just read it off like 10 11 12 movies that could po- possibly get like 10 nominees in i i, I i'm not sure if they're going to go all 10 the oscars but if they do eight it's, i think it's going to be a really strong eight um in there and because a lot of the films like usually you know you know how it is shane these nominees come, uh, come out and... Anything might, can happen. We might say, oh, how the hell did that film get in, you know? I think this year, a lot of there are a lot of films that have the potential to do really well. And every single film that we said in... in every single film that we mentioned, with the exception of Jojo Rabbit, and I think you agree with me as well in regards to that, um, uh, is a really strong movie. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what happens when it comes to those Oscar noms and... You know, if, if Ford versus Ferrari or a Knives Out gets in there, um, or an Uncut Gems, that's going to be all the better. I do think, though, I'm going to go... I'm going to make a prediction now it's going to be eight. Eight nominees. I'm going to say Irishman, Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Marriage Story, 1917, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Little Men, Women. That's going to be my eight. Um, okay. I'm going to say. Yeah, no, I can't argue with that. And uh, that's, a, that's a, you know, like I said, with the exception of Jojo, something... We don't not a big fan of. I think it's a really strong eight right there, because um, every film has something really cool going for it. Joker has a great performance. Nine Seven Years the Direction. I mean, every film has something good, and then you have films like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Marriage Story, Irishman. that have a combination of all those things. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be a real, real, real strong bunch of nominees coming out if we're correct, and I'd like to say think that we are. <laughs> um, Golden Globes. Monday, are you got anything planned for your Golden Globes viewing experience, Shane? Uh, yes, I'll be doing. Um, I'm working. I'm back to work Monday uh, to be doing report radio reports uh, like post awards and then uh, afterwards as well. Excellent. So, pre and post. Sorry, yes. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, to me, award season officially. I mean, I love the Emmy Awards and and a few other little awards that have been in between but to me the golden globes officially kicks off award season excellent and shane where can people find your stuff online uh any red carpet interviews or movie reviews and anything else movie related you can find me on either instagram or twitter at movie underscore analyst that's at movie underscore analyst and for everyone else you can check out my stuff at mattsmoviereviews.net you can find me on twitter at mattsmoviereview also on facebook and youtube the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast you can find on itunes spotify Twitcher. Uh, twitcher sorry 
podcast <laughs> podcast you can find on iTunes, Spotify, What's Stitcher, <laughs> Stitcher uh, Podbean, SoundCloud, and also YouTube as well. Um, do check it all out. I'm going to try to have this podcast up by tomorrow. And Shane, hopefully you and I can talk uh, Golden Globe wins sometime next week. Yes, I think we should uh, sometimes this time next week. And um, thanks again. Thank you, Shane.